This song is going to stop them in their tracks. I've been practicing all week. I stand on the street corner playing my heart out on my shamisen. I look up with hope at every passing face waiting for people to stop. But everyone keeps walking by, not even casting me a glance. I keep playing trying to stay positive. Just then, a person approached me looking bored. You know flying in the clouds? Flying in the clouds? Interesting. Oh yeah, my name's Orange by the way. Who is it by? Yasu Hashi Kengyo Hiromori Hayashi Nakao Tosan. Why do you have to be so specific? I was like <laughs> struggling to read out the words. The stranger raised a brow at me, chomping loudly on his gum. It's by Little Monster. Interesting. I don't know what he's saying, but let's continue. Well, that's definitely not a classic composer. Yup. And I definitely don't know how to play it. What do I do? You're about to encounter your first choice. Sure, let me see. Try to play the song. Play something else <laughs> entirely. Let me just try to play the song. <laughs> Taking what leader I have on the radio, I try to play the song. Every note sounds wrong and awkward, offbeat. The stranger's hopeful expression withers. He gives me a dirty look and storm off. Yep, to be expected. Actually, I should have gone for the latter. Should I play different song entirely? But it's all right. As I watch him go, I slump onto the sidewalk, frustrated. I've been playing shamisen since I was a little kid, but it's really starting to feel like I'm not going to go anywhere with it. In the distance, my school bells ring. Normally, I'll be rushing trying not to be late, but today, I need to go somewhere to get off my mind of this, okay? This is pretty um, frustrating for me, but where? Suddenly, a flyer slams into my face. Oh, this flyer is pretty, hmm, not bad. A flyer for a maid cafe. Maid cafe? Interesting. Okay. Is that the... I'm not sure where is it, but I know it's a train station. Oh, Akihabara. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know. When I saw JK, I was like wondering, is it Akihabara or not? Okay. I wander through the streets of Akihabara. People in skimpy cosplay and foxtail raised by me. Girls in maid outfits force flyers and coupons into my hands. I shrink away, feeling completely out of place. This seems like a good idea at first. Hey, come into my cafe! Cosplayer. No, why don't you come into mine? I stumble away from them, my heart racing. No, it's fine, totally fine. I'm, uh, ah. I crash into a girl and tumble to the ground. When I look up, I can't breathe for a second. Alright, this is... She dressed as a dragon and looks completely frantic. The concern in her eyes makes everything move in slow motion for her moment. She's beautiful, breathtaking. Hmm, interesting, I don't... I think it's okay. I'll maybe give it 7.5. Not to say like this... The most beautiful. And I ran right into her. What do I do? Um... Apologize to her, I want to see her reaction. I'm so so sorry. I wasn't looking where I was going. That's totally unlike me. Great, so now I'm lying to her. <laughs> Interesting. The girl's eyes widen as she looks at my arm. No, no, it's my fault. It's totally my fault. I'm the one who is sorry. Look at what I have done to you. What she has done to me? Yeah, what? I follow her gaze to my arms to see a gash on my bicep. One of the girl's horns trips. With my blurred I see. So I was going to ask, hey, is the horn real or fake? <laughs> since I'm not since I don't know she's a dragon, alright? She slides me open with her costume. I can fix this. I definitely can fix this. She glanced around frantically, hands held against her chest. I just need to um hold on. She scrambles away from me, her dress ruffling in the wind. She returns only an instant later, a what? of napkins in her hand. They aren't band-aids, but we can at least clean you up. I'm so sorry I did this. I never pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm, the worry and panic in her eyes are overwhelming. I lower my voice and I lean into her, giving her a reassuring smile. 
It's alright, man. I mean, it's alright, woman. <laughs> hey, it's okay. Hand shaking, she unsurely extends the wad of napkins to me. What do I do? Let me see. Let her tend to the wound, tend to the wound. Um, let me let her do it, okay? This, um, this story is pretty different from what I used to do because there wouldn't be too much of this, um, choice option to pick from, but in this, in this dragon, Secret of the Dragon Cafe, this one is pretty different since I keep getting the, the choice to pick from, like the option A or option B, so it's pretty different right off the bat. This is what I can tell from the story that I've been reading. Okay, let's continue. I hesitate, waiting for her to clean the wound. Her eyes light up with the sudden realization. <laughs> oh, you want me to... Right, right, obviously. Okay, hands still shaking. She reached forward and gently pressed the napkin against my skin. Am I pressing too hard? No, you are okay. Too soft? I can't help but smile at her. No, it's perfect. You don't think you need a tonicate, <laughs> do you? No, I like to keep my arms tanks. My gaze drifts to her horn, glistening into the sunlight. Your horns must be as strong as a real dragon to do this kind of damage. The girl's face flush bright, bright red, okay? She stumbles away from me, giggling awkwardly. Real dragon? That would be like so funny, right? <laughs> Real dragon, huh? Her fright laughter is so fake, it physically hurts. Yeah, it's cringe as well if I were in that situation. I force an uneasy smile. Ha, huh, sounds like something a real dragon would say. The girl's face fall. She grabs her back and starts to race away from me. Over her shoulder in one breath, she yells back. So sorry I stabbed you. Hope you have a good day, okay? Bye. I watch her go. That was weird. Just then something on the ground catch my eyes. I lean down to pick it up and in disbelief. It's an iridescent scale, no doubt part of a costume. But it feels heavy, metallic almost. And oddly, this feels like lizard skin or something. I better get this back to her. <laughs> I was wondering like... How are you going to meet her again since she's running away from you and you don't really know her? Not to mention the fact that you don't really care about this thing. But since there is a scale drop on the floor and you're going to pick it up and give it to her, it makes sense that this story is progressing towards me meeting her again and other dragon girls, okay? I fast walk down the street, keeping sight of the girl in the distance. She's freakishly fast, darting through the crowd with ease. I chase after her to keep up, but when we reach the end of the street, I lose her. The crowd parts, revealing that there are only two stores on either side of the road. She must have gone to one of these. Burning Love? They give places here the dumbest names. <laughs> Burning Love. And the other one is Dragon Dream. Ew. Yep, it's pretty obvious. Which store do I go to? Definitely burning love, okay, since you give me the, the really dumb option. <laughs> I turn towards on the entrance of burning love, and I'm shocked to discover a long line. I tap someone on the shoulder. What is this line for? Is, is it for a dragon cafe? And don't think you can just walk in here, pal. I've been waiting here all morning. Okay, well, I'm in the right spot. But there's no way in hell I'm waiting all morning. Bypassing the line at Burning Love, I creep towards the back of the building. Maybe there's some way I can sneak in through the back, right? I'll flag someone down at least. Interesting. I glance at the scale in my hand again. My heart drops as I look at, really look at it. It looks so real. Well, as real as a dragon scale can look, I guess. Just then, three girls burst out of a side door. Okay, interesting. I get to meet all of these three. I duck behind a wall, heart racing. I pick out just enough to spot the girl bump into me. She looked frantic but the other girls with her look less so. I don't know why you come crying to us whenever this happens, Mireha. The girl that I bump into balls her fists together. So her name is Mireha. Because it's a big deal, Ririka. Oh my god, the name is pretty hard to pronounce. It keeps happening, and it just 
proving that it's dangerous for us to be here. We have to go back to the dragon realm before I actually hurt one. Right, Iruhi. <laughs> oh god, it's gonna be difficult. Dragon realm? What are these girls talking about? I pressed myself against the side of the wall as adre adrenaline surged in me. They are just fantasy role playing for work, obviously, right? Let's not get all ahead of ourselves here. Did you kill him? <laughs> Jeez. Okay, this one is pretty not bad looking, but her ears isn't that great. No, I didn't kill him. Did you mime him? No. Castrating? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> it's it's cringe, okay? Miraha blushed slightly, rising onto the tip of her toes in shock. Of course not. <laughs> Ririka looks at her nails unbothered. Well, that's a shame. Ririka, we are not here to do any of that. Ririka leans back on a box, casual and relaxed. But why not? There are already so many of them. And I mean, come on, they are so weak. Yeah, definitely role playing, right? <laughs> the scale in my hand feels even heavier now. I got back my anxiety trying to keep my cool, trying not to think about the absurd thoughts racing through my head. Human gets one little scratch and they are out of commission for weeks. You know, we used to stab each other with <laughs> with them for fun before we could even walk. Ibrahim brightens suddenly, interested in the conversation. But human don't have skills like we do. Ibrahim scrambles to pull out a notebook. It's overflowing with dozens of hand-drawn diagrams and observations. She is giving out strong mad scientist vibes here and really committing to her role interesting they have a thin layer of skin it covers all their organs but it's also an organ itself okay i mean so they say <laughs> it just Yuri shrugs and move to the next diagram it turns out their bodies are almost as confusing as their customs Mirhi blushes her gaze fixed squarely on the ground this role playing is getting questionable. Now enough of this nonsense. As much as I would like to go home, you know we can't do that yet. I'm just worried about what hurting them? It's not like you slice him open and then left evidence behind. Ryuka starts to lead the girls back inside, but ever he gaps. But you're missing a skill me Mireha. An icy cold rush through my body. I stand there in shock, absolutely frozen in place. After hearing that, I can't just step out holding this. Mireha turns around, chasing her tail like a dog to see her missing scale. Really? Oh no, oh no. Ririka groans, annoyed. You're going to get us caught if you keep being careless like this. Just recall your scale and let's get back to work. Mireha closed her eyes, tight and focus. Suddenly the scale starts to waver in my hand. It glows with a magical energy unlike anything I have ever seen. I'm transfixed. So transfixed in fact that I can't even react before the scale zips off my hand. Slicing the skin of my palm open in the process. I gaps as the searing, burning pain overwhelms my whole arm. Alright. I stumble forward into the alley in shock. So the dragon scale snaps in place on Mireha's tail. Which would be super cool. You know if they weren't staring at me. The girl <laughs> shot daggers at me as I am frozen in place. We stare at one another in silence for a long shock moment. What do I say? <laughs> let me see, let me see. This is interesting. Um, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I was just passing through. Really? The girl says nothing. They inch closer to me looking tense and concerned. It is a nice alley you have here. So nice. A great place for totally normal humans to hang out. Rika lunged forward. I stumble back, heart practically leaping out of my chest. So humans are skittish and stupid. Except for you. You guys are totally smart and brave dragons. Humans. I mean humans. Totally smart and brave humans. I stumble back as the girls close in on me. 
Am I seriously about to be killed by dragons? Do I seriously think dragons are real? Mireha nervously fiddles with her hands. She looks like she is about to burst into tears at any moment. Rirka, don't hurt him. What are we supposed to do with him? Oh my god, this dragon woman want to kill me? This is crazy. Maybe we could keep him. Like a pet. Jeez. What the hell is this? <laughs> the story is really funny. We could even study him. You are crazy. You are a psychopath. You mean experiment? Lightly experiment. Nothing like what happened with the turtle. I gotta get the hell out of here. Now, without thinking, I turned to run away. I scrambled down the alley as fast as my leg will carry me. Ah, just let him go. It's not like he's gonna come back. Did I manage to run away? I run faster and faster, my lungs burning in my chest. Then suddenly the girls are standing in front of me. I stop in my track, gasping for breath. They seem stupider and stupider the more time I spend with them. Suddenly the words around me blurs. I stumble as the dizziness overwhelms me. My stomach churns as I reach out trying to find something to grab. But instead I stumble back on the ground. What's wrong with him? I lay on the ground. The girls are a blur above me. Like an impressionist painting I can't make out. Oh no, they are skill cut his hand, Miraha. In my days, I lift my hand to look at it. The blood seeps out of it, rapidly painting my whole palm red. I don't know. Is that a bad thing? Miraha, that's a really bad thing. Do you know where we can put his body? This Ririka is really naughty, you know. Trying to kill me <laughs> and all those, saying all those crazy stuff. He's not dying on us. Hopefully not. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Suddenly, a surging pain rips through my arm. And then, there's nothing but blackness. Okay, maybe I am in a coma, maybe. <laughs> oh, is that the end? 